I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And in this video, we are gonna be talking about intense, close relationships. We know you guys love this one. Mm -hmm. Because we hear so much about them. All the time, every day. <laughs> yep. I do wanna start out with saying that we are available for coaching. This is something that's very easy to book with us. You can look on our website and go from there. And that's the only way to do it is through the website. Mm -hmm. Be careful of scammers. Sometimes I've seen fake Instagrams. Oh, wow. And now with AI, there might be some <laughs> yeah. AI Craig floating out there. <laughs> exactly. The only way is through the website. I like to emphasize that because I've seen people create fake YouTube accounts mm. as me and all oh, we will do email coaching through this and that way and cash app and stuff like that. Nope. The only way is directly through the website. I saw somebody get scammed a couple weeks ago. Oh, no. Yeah. No. Be careful, guys. All right, so intense relationships. It comes up so often in our calls. I mean, we hear it all the time about, oh, I met this person. Mm -hmm. It felt amazing. It was incredible from the get-go. But you have to be careful about these situations because they often kind of blow up quickly or they, you know, they burn out fast. And then you feel that intense connection and it's replaced with an intense painful loss. Mm -hmm, exactly. And sometimes these intense and short term relationships can feel like a bigger breakup than maybe even longer relationships that you've had in the past. Yeah. So it can be really mind boggling to be in that type of a breakup and, and understanding, wow, how did this get so real and so serious so quick? Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes these types of intense relationships will have a high level of passion there will be something that just feels right. You know, sometimes I hear it described as, I've never felt anything like this before in my entire life. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be uh, this novel, new, exciting feeling. There's a lot of chemicals that are floating around in your body from meeting someone new yeah. and meeting someone that has uh, most likely a bit of boundarylessness. Many times this type of high intensity relationship also has a high level of passion. There will be a lot of talk about the future, a lot of planning very early on. Mm. Sometimes I hear, you know, in the first three months of knowing someone, they're already talking about children and marriage, yep. buying a house together. Yep. So a lot of times there's a large promise for the future. It can be seemingly out of nowhere. And in the moment, you're thinking, wow, I didn't expect this type of love to hit me. I didn't expect to meet a person like this. And it might take some time before you look back and you realize, man, okay, maybe I was pretty vulnerable in that moment. Or now looking back and reflecting, I had just, you know, lost my dog or lost a job or I had been struggling emotionally during that time. So in the moment, it might seem out of nowhere that these relationships pop up. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times we also see vulnerability or being in a vulnerable state connected with the timing of meeting someone. Yep. That's true. Mm -hmm. So all of these can be traits of this high intensity type of relationship. It can be like something you've never felt before, something you've never experienced. Mm -hmm. A lot of chemicals rushing through your body with the lust and you know, with the excitement of the relationship. So a lot of times the fantasy is so amazing and alive that it's like too good to be true. Mm -hmm. Well, it probably is too good to be true, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Now, the healthier you are, the more likely, and the healthier they are, both people, the more likely that too good to be true feeling stays. But if one person or both people have attachment issues, that too good be, to be true is gonna fall apart because of the mental health and the attachment issues and the abandonment issues and the poor communication and all the things that are gonna come because of the abandonment wounds. Mm -hmm. So you gotta be careful. 
the intensity of those feelings may feel like something you've never had in your entire life. And boy, when you get that feeling, it's like an addiction. Mm -hmm. And it's like every time you talk to that person, it's exciting, you feel alive, it feels amazing. And we get really scared of losing that person and then we spiral mm -hmm. because we start to try and control or manipulate. That's what I'm saying is you have to be balanced and work through your attachment issues because if you don't, you're gonna fear losing that. And what do I say? The very thing we fear losing, we often cause to happen. Mm -hmm. So you start to get scared because the person seems so great. And then they start to do little things that make, make them pull away. And now you're going to overcompensate by being manipulative, controlling, and mm -hmm. lashing out. And then they're going to push away even further. And so you're going to see the anxious avoidance cycle. So you just have to be careful of these things and educate yourself. That way you don't, you can step back and instead of just getting into that dynamic that often people get into. Exactly. Sometimes you will also see that one or both parties in this high intensity relationship will have a lack of boundaries or will have soft boundaries. Especially if they have a disorganized attachment style. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Or personality disorder, different mental health issues can also play into this. Mm -hmm. you know, they are more likely to go 100% all in from the get-go rather than pacing themselves and really gathering more information before making an informed decision on who their partner is going to be. Mm -hmm. So they are more likely to say, oh my gosh, this feels so good. I want you know 10 times more of it and more of it and more of it and not be able to, to base themselves, yep. essentially. Yep, because they're so vulnerable mm -hmm. with you that it just feels like you feel very connected with somebody who can be so vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what you'll find is that people who are highly charismatic will also be in these patterns a lot. You know, because they are so charming, they have so much potential in your eyes, you have so much hope for this being you know, the relationship that you've always wanted, uh, and they can end up you know, presenting an image that's not long-lasting, like Craig was saying. Yeah. Sometimes highly charismatic people, these highly charismatic traits, can be found in those with personality disorders. And so this also ties into that boundarylessness. It can be hard with interpersonal relationships when you have personality disorders and that can shine through in these intense relationships. Yep. We actually had a professor, the same professor mm -hmm. together, who I remember saying years ago, when she met someone that was charismatic, it was a big red flag. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That always stood with me mm -hmm. because it was like, hmm. And oftentimes people with personality disorders have faced trauma in their life. Sometimes trauma can make someone be intuitive in a way that others can't be. Mm. So what I yeah. mean is that this highly charismatic person will be listening, watching, and sensing what it is that you're saying, what your vulnerabilities are, what your hopes are, what your dreams are, and will tailor a personality to be best liked by you or to get you know most attention possible for, from you. So keep that in mind that it might seem like this person is perfectly aligned for everything you've ever wanted in life, but you know we can only see that if it is consistent throughout their life too. You know, all of a sudden, this person who has been, I don't know, really into water sports is now really into land sports. And you're just thinking, why? You know, or there's a, a major 180 change in this person and you don't know yet because they're only presenting one side of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you have to take your time getting to know people because, you know, whether or not it's a mask that people are presenting or it's our hormones that are causing us not to see who they are mm -hmm. or we're all trying to be on our best behavior in the beginning because we're so excited about those things, this new person. I feel like it's kind of a combination of all these things mm -hmm. that happen with us, but... The point is, is that in the beginning, like those first six months especially, you really don't know what they're going to look like in the long run. How they're going to look two years from now, five years from now. Mm -hmm. They're probably going to look like a very different person. Right. And the amount that you're able to, to see through rose-colored glasses is going to be equivalent to the severity of your unmet needs. 
So what I mean is the more that your needs have gone unmet in childhood, the greater those needs are, the more that you've been denied those needs by caregivers, by others in your life, the more you are going to be willing to accept someone who is presenting you know, this idealized version of themselves. And the more likely you are to turn a blind eye to some of the red flags or concerning behaviors that they may have. Yeah, absolutely. So keep that in mind. And if you're finding yourself in this pattern, you know, there are some questions that might be helpful for you to ask, to ask yourself, to think about as you consider your relationships. And one is, are you addicted to the novelty or the excitement of new relationships mm -hmm. you know this is a sort of high that someone can follow yeah and you know it can be something that that feels endless you know especially with things like online dating now you know dating is a lot more accessible than it used to be and you might find yourself in this pattern of dating people just for a couple months at a time, falling in love, feeling the intensity of feelings, imagining a whole life with them, a whole world with them, and then it not being sustainable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Because mm -hmm. people will be like, we just talked about getting married three weeks ago, then we had two fights, and he broke up with me, and now he doesn't even want to talk to me anymore. Mm -hmm. I hear it all the time. Yep, yeah. It's something that can be cyclical, okay? Also, I want you to think about when do you feel truly safe in a relationship, okay? And how do you know when someone is safe? Sometimes falling into these relationships really quickly can also cause you to, to question your own radar. Mm -hmm. Do I really know when someone is safe? How, how can I trust anyone if this relationship just burned out and I really thought it was real? Mm -hmm. So, you know, honing back in on what is, what is my intuition? What is that? Where is my sense of being able to trust someone? And the more you work through your attachment issues, the more you go to therapy, the more you learn about relationship skills, the more refined this little meter will be. You know, the more refined you'll be able to gauge whether someone is, you know, being genuine and honest with you. If someone is safe, you'll be able to pace yourself and with time, you know, think, is this a good decision? Is this not? Of course, there are people that are extremely charming and experts at this, okay? <laughs> so you can have the best meter in the world, you can read people better than anyone you know, and still fall into a situation that, you know, you are deceived or you're still shocked. Yeah, absolutely. Full warning. Yep. But it does help to to work on on these issues. You know, it prevents a lot more. You know, some things we can't we can't guarantee your life is going to be perfect, okay? No. But but working on these things helps. The workbooks and the creative healing course will really help you see these things and be more balanced in your approach to dating people because intimacy is something that is earned. And most people make the mistake of just assuming we can trust this new person. Mm -hmm. Oh, they seem so nice. They're treating me good. And we have our unmet needs. So we're kind of desperate. It's like we're so hungry to eat that we're not really looking at what's inside, mm -hmm. you know? And so we wind up, you know, picking somebody that isn't gonna be good for us in the long run because we're overlooking details from the get-go. So you gotta really do the work and heal your attachment issues, find out your unmet needs, because if you don't, you, any new person that comes along you're gonna be so happy and excited for that attention that you're not gonna see that maybe they don't deserve your trust mm -hmm. and that they might betray you or hurt you or not be a good partner for you in the long run. Right, right. And a lot of times these situations burn out quickly because you were having a, a lot of information in the beginning and then with time you realize, okay, they could only sustain that mask for so long. Mm -hmm. You know, after a certain period of time, their true self starts to come out more and more. And that's really where the issues start. Yep. You know, we say that attachment really is activated in a relationship normally after around the six month mark. Of course, this varies between relationship and couples, but that's just what we normally see. And here's another hard truth. Mm. Your attachment issues are going to come out too. Mm -hmm. So we're putting a lot of uh, emphasis on the other person but the reality is you have probably blindly done things because of your own attachment issues 
So it's not just on them. Mm -hmm. You have to hold yourself accountable on who you are and who you want to be in a relationship. Because if you don't, then you're going to have a lopsided view on the connections you're having. And, and you're just going to be blaming everybody that you date instead of realizing how you may be causing that cycle or those issues to continue. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I love what you said earlier about intimacy is something that is earned. It takes patience. You know, it, it is something that is cultivated with time. And that's the beauty of it is that, you know, you invest slowly over time and you learn more and more about a person. You're able to, to gain more information. Am I sure about this? Do I want to do this? Do I want to take another step with this person? And it's that pacing that really allows you to get closer than you, than you could or than it feels like you could in one of these quick, intense relationships over time. So All right. keep that in mind and remember that you want to be able to see someone through different seasons, throughout different emotions. Now, we normally say knowing someone for about a year mm -hmm. can be a, a good gauge to yeah. see, okay, well, what are they like during Christmas? What are they like during Thanksgiving? Maybe yeah. there's something that happens every year that brings up a lot of emotions in them. These are important things to know. Imagine you're, that you're dating a tax accountant. <laughs> yeah, right. Right? And so <laughs> you have no idea what they're like until tax season comes. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. All right. <laughs> so hopefully this one's been helpful to you. Of course, if you want to get our help personally, you could do that on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Victoria is also available for Skype coaching. I'm here whenever you'd like to chat. Just click on her name at the top of the website to schedule with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.